Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Absolutely delicious. Hey, my name is Will Coleman and I'm in the kitchen with Food 52 showing you how to make a classic steak dinner that you're gonna be obsessed with because I am as well. I'm putting my own take on it doing a sun-dried tomato pesto that is full of robust flavors and it wouldn't be a classic steak dinner without a baked potato on the side loaded up with butter, chives, cream fresh. It's gonna be fantastic. Let's get cooking. But before we get started, you have to do a glass of wine. Even if you're cooking by yourself, you deserve it. Cheers. So when it comes to a classic steak dinner, I love a ribeye because growing up, ribeyes were my top thing of choice. I had a pretty refined taste palette as a child. I didn't always get it all the time, but when I had my hands on a steak, it was a ribeye. But you can use a T-bone steak, a sirloin steak, use what you can afford and use what you love. So to get started with our steak, we are going to pat it dry because when you get the steak out of the packaging, it has that moisture on it and you wanna get that all out. So I'm patting it dry with some paper towel on both sides. And patting it dry is gonna make sure you get a really even crust on your steak when it comes time to sear it. Okay, so now that it's patted dry, I am gonna season it with some salt and pink peppercorn. So I like to use pink peppercorns instead of black peppercorns on my steak because pink peppercorns usually tend to taste more like a chili than a regular black peppercorn, but it still has that same bite as peppercorns, which I love. But if you have black peppercorns, use that at home. So I'm salt and peppering on both sides. And whenever I'm using salt on meat, it's kosher. All right, I'm putting my steaks in the fridge for eight hours or overnight, and make sure you leave it unsealed in the fridge all by itself. So in my opinion, a classic steak dinner is not a classic steak dinner without potatoes. I love mashed potatoes, I love roasted, I love fried, but a classic baked potato has the key to my heart forever. It's so easy, you get a fork, add a couple pokes to your potato so that it doesn't explode in the oven because we are baking it for 55 minutes. So it's gonna be there for quite a long time. And you wanna just poke a few holes all throughout. And then give it some love with some salt and pepper. The most simple seasonings, but it has such a bold flavor. I'm gonna do those pink peppercorns once again. A little drizzle of olive oil. Because it needs the olive oil to cook properly and get those crusty bits. All right, now we're gonna massage them. Even a potato likes a nice massage. And that's all set. We're gonna put them in the oven at 450 degrees for 55 minutes or until they're fork tender. Can't wait. So while your potatoes are baking in the oven, this is the perfect time to take out your steaks to come to room temperature, at least for 30 minutes. It's better to have your steak on the counter coming to room temperature because it cooks evenly and it's just a better steak. So let's make our pesto. To make our sun-dried tomato pesto, we're gonna put everything into our food processor, throw it on there, forget about it, and it's tasty, delicious, amazing. So I'm gonna put my basil leaves all in here. I like to use small leaves whenever possible because they're sweeter and it creates a more tasty pesto. And then some sun-dried tomatoes, which are really intensified on the sweetness and the tartness. Fun fact, I never liked sun-dried tomatoes. I blame it on my mother because she put in everything growing up. Um, but up until last year, I'm like, let me grow up and you know expand my palate. So now I love sun-dried tomatoes, but they are an intense flavor, so I'm using eight. But if you love them, add more. If you wanna try them, add less. It's your pesto. I'm going to add some walnuts. Classically for pesto, people use pine nuts. I just love the mild flavor that walnuts add to this pesto. A little bit of salt, because you need some flavor. Some peeled garlic cloves. I love garlic, so if three isn't enough for you, you know what to do. And then some ground black pepper. Look how fancy this was. Just press the button and it's all out. All right, we're gonna close this up. I'm gonna turn it on, and while it's blending, I'm gonna remove this spout and slowly drizzle in my olive oil until it's creamy. Let's go. All 
All right, let's check it out. So I like to say to use about a half a cup, two, three, four cups of olive oil because it's all up to you when it comes to the consistency that you want it to be. But I'm gonna scrape the sides down. And when it comes to pesto, I like my consistency to be more like a chimichurri, so not completely smooth. I wanna have a little bit of texture in there from that basil, from those sun-dried tomatoes, from that garlic, from the nuts. I don't want it to be like baby food. I want it to, you know, you want to, I want to see the things that I put in my pesto. So scrape the sides down. Let's give it a few more pauses. All right, I think that's perfect. So with everything you cook, you want to taste your food because you don't want to wait until it's too late to say, oops, that needed some more salt. So let's scoop out our pesto into a bowl and you want to make sure you get every single bit because it is delicious now my favorite part let's taste mm. it's sweet it's slightly tart i love dishes that have complex flavors because you're like mm, what am i tasting and your guests will say the same thing so let's move along. It's time to sear our steaks. Let's get a cast iron skillet on the stove with a little bit of oil. The oil is going to splatter, so you may want to grab an apron if you want to protect your outfit. Okay, so I have my cast iron over medium high heat because when you sear steaks, you want it to be over a high temperature so it can get a real crusty finish. So you want to wait until your pan begins to start smoking and then add your oil. About three tablespoons would do. And then I'm gonna add my steak into the pan. And you wanna make sure you have a large enough pan to fit both steaks comfortably so they're not really pressed together and they're steaming because you want them to sear, not steam. Listen to this noise. That could be a new ringtone. So we have a few inches away from each steak. You don't want to touch your steaks after you put it in because you're going to ruin your whole searing situation. Leave it alone for two minutes. Add your cast iron pan right on top or a cast iron weight, whatever you have at home. You just want to make sure you're pressing your steak down to get maximum searing on both sides of the steak. Okay, while our steaks are searing, I'm going to go to the potatoes and flip them over because it's been about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been about four minutes with the searing, and now it's time for the moment of truth, flipping them. Oh my goodness. You're looking to get that beautiful golden sear on both sides, and then put that pan right back on to keep it searing. We need it to be golden brown on both sides, not just one. Okay, now it's time to add our butter in, our crushed garlic, and an art bundle to get all of that fat and garlic flavor on both sides of the steak. Forget a flower bouquet. Give me an herb bouquet. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna take out my steaks and put them on a plate to rest. Y'all, look at these steaks. Golden brown, you can see all that juice. Mm. I will eat this right now, but we have more things to do. <laughs> okay, now that our steaks are resting, we can't let all this beautiful fond go to waste. We're gonna add some mushrooms into the pan and stir it around with our butter, our herbs, our garlic. I'm using a mix of baby portabellas, shiitakes. I like to do a blend of mushrooms so I can have a complexity of flavor. And most importantly, they're delicious. As I'm stirring the mushrooms together, I'm scraping the bottom of the pan to get all that flavor lifted up and onto the mushrooms. And right before you're done cooking your mushrooms, be sure to add some salt and pepper to them. And if you want a little spice, throw some crushed red chili flakes in it. You won't regret it. All right, our mushrooms are all done. They're looking golden brown. I'm gonna transfer them into a plate. And don't forget to get all that butter out.
Okay, our steak is all done. It cut like butter, which is a good sign. It's perfectly cooked. I think it's time to plate up this beautiful steak with our potatoes, our pesto, and don't forget about those mushrooms. I'm gonna use a paring knife to cut in the potato. I have to do a small cut in the middle and then squeeze it so the that fluffy potato can burst out. And then I'm going to add a slice of butter. Who doesn't love butter in a baked potato? Some ground black pepper, a little bit of salt, some creme fraiche. I like creme fraiche, it makes me feel a little bit extra fancy, but you can use sour cream if you have that on hand. Some chives for color and also flavor. And you are all set, but you can't forget about the pesto. That's what we're really here for. Now it's time for my favorite part, y'all tasting my classic steak dinner. Let's get into it. So I think I'm gonna dive in for the steak first because that's what we're really here for with that pesto. And I love how the steak is beautifully marbled throughout everything you can ask for for a steak dinner that's made at home. So tasty. The steak is fantastic. The pesto is tart, it's sweet. The garlic is there, you can definitely taste it. That basil is phenomenal. Wow. With your leftover pesto, I strongly suggest, obviously not to throw it away, toss it in some pasta, leftover dinners at home, freeze it if you want, it's that good. And then, our baked potato. Because it's not a classic steak dinner without the baked potato, y'all. You already know it's good. You already know it's good. Mm. I cannot wait for you to make this at home. Make it a date night, treat yourself, because you deserve it. So let's get cooking. Thanks for watching you all, and don't forget your glass of wine. Cheers.